my generation had the illusion that we were going to, we were going to destroy the gallery system. We were totally wrong. Uh, in fact, I think you know it's 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 kind of common now, common art language to say, well, the '70s was this really radical gener generation. Then the '80s came along, and everything became involved in money. I think my generation caused the '80s when art seemed to be, uh, and this was you know this was probably because of the influence of words like quote conceptual art. This was part of the atmosphere of, of, 19, of 1968. So it seemed like this was a time when every authority figure was being questioned, whether it was the United States uh, in the time of the Vietnam War, whether it was male in the face of first feminist writings. And for a lot of us, it, it, it was, it's the gallery system. You know? I never felt I never felt at home at art. I came from another field. Of my, you know, I didn't begin as an artist. I began as a writer, uh, as a poet. I went to art because I, there was at least a brief time in the beginning of the seventies. It was a time when when art seemed like a non-field field. Art was a field that had no inherent characteristics of its own except for the fact that it was called art. So art was a field into which you could import from other fields, from sociology, from history, from news. That, I, that was the reason why I, and I think some other people, went to art, because it seemed like we could do anything there. But it was an, it was an illusion, because before work, that, and, and obviously this doesn't mean that there, weren't, that there weren't other examples, and other examples of the kind of stuff we were doing obviously came, came, came before us. But uh, before, before a lot of the work that we did, I think a, you know, every self-respecting collector could go into a gallery, and they knew exactly, they knew what a painting was, they knew what a sculpture was. Now, collectors, you know, once my generation existed, now collectors went into a gallery and they were very confused. They had to use the gallery dealer as a guide. You know, I don't know where the art is. And the gallery dealer could say, I can show you. I can show you and you can buy it. So it was an amazingly dangerous thing we did, though we didn't realize it. You know, we put, we put galleries in the, in the position of uh, now they could orient, they could orient what, what a collector could do. The one in 76, I certainly did, uh, I think, I don't, I don't remember if Germano Ceylon curated it alone or as part of a group of people, but certainly the, the I made a space to be in. I think Dan Graham did. I think a number of people did. Uh, were they architectural spaces? It was around the time when I was, you know, it was it was in, it was in the mid '70s when I was doing installations that I started to think uh, I don't think my stuff belongs in art anymore because what interested me in installations is that uh, well two things, that I was doing something specific for the space that I was working in at that time. At that time, when I was asked to do a show, I never wanted to have a piece in mind. I, I never wanted to have a piece in mind until I was given a space to work with because I wanted, I wanted work to be specific. So I started to realize that I hated the idea of a universal art. I didn't believe in universals. Even if it was proven to me that universals existed, I wouldn't have wanted to believe in universals because universals are religion. They're religion and politics taken as religion. So, uh, so it was really important to me that, that I would do something in a space that ideally couldn't be repeated in another space uh, because I wanted something to make sense for this particular time in this particular space. And I did a few, a few installations in gallery spaces around 76 that I thought, wow, maybe I've found a way to, I found a way to treat a gallery or museum space 
as a kind of community, community meeting place and hence as a kind of public place. But at the same time that I thought that, I said, I'm fooling myself. A gallery or museum is never going to be a public space. But in, in, in 76, I was acting as if I was doing something specifically for Venice. The, the piece was called Venice Belongs to Us. Uh, and it had a kind of four-channel cha four audio, audio tape that was very much about uh, Italian politics of the time. I think the first time I was in Venice was the, was the first time I was in Documenta, which was in 72. I was in the middle of this history that I was trying to ignore because I... <laughs> no, that, that, that's not exactly true. Jasper, Jasper Johns was, maybe strangely to a lot of people, was a very important important thing for me. But it was an important thing for me, not because of art, but because of poetry. I don't know if I can think of any place where I wouldn't want to intervene. <laughs> I mean, you know, you like to tamper with things. Or, I, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't think I believe that, that any place is too good to be tampered with. I mean, I think history is a nightmare. You know, I think history is something that, that, that you, have to, you, you, you have to try to get out. I mean, most likely, I've. Uh, no, I was going. I was going to say. I was going to say almost any. You know, quote, <laughs> almost anywhere. I feel most. I feel most at home in a kind of city where uh, a lot is going on. Though I certainly don't use it. I've never. I've. You know. I. I. I'm a relatively unsocial person. I probably don't even don't even go out much. I work. I work all the time, especially the older I get. Uh, but I like, I like the fact that other things are going on. That question depends on how near a future are we talking about. There's probably going to be a, a language that's a mix of kind of like the language that they, the language that's spoken in uh, Ridley, Scott, Ridley Scott's version of Blade Runner, you know, a kind of if it is, it's an ultra, an ultra, an ultra, ultra, ultra conservative one. But probably most nations are ultra conservative at heart. I went to art because at, there was at least a brief time in the beginning of the '70s when art seemed to be, uh, and this was, you know, this was probably because of the influence of words like quote conceptual art. It was a time when, when art seemed like a non-field field. Art was a field that had no inherent characteristics of its own, except for the fact that it was called art. So art was a field into which you could import from other fields, from sociology, from history, from news. That, I, that was the reason why I, and I think some other people, went to art, because it seemed like we could do anything there. Art is a strange word because, uh, because it's also used in everyday language as the approval of something. That, that if, 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 you, you know, if, if in everyday life you, you find someone or something is is, appeals to you, you say, wow, it's like a work of art. So there's something, there's something amazingly wrong-headed with art because it's already praising itself. So art has a little bit of, 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 of self-aggrandizement built, in, built into it. I hate art as a career. I like art as, as, an, as an activity. So that notion of art I, I love. The other notion of art is always about leaving people out.